All right, Joe W. Bristol, let's continue our little uh, discussion here about putting these SA-200s inside of a pickup. Uh, the old SAs are longer than uh, just about any weld machine. The newer ones, you don't have to worry about it. They're made to be in a pickup. They're shorter, all of that kind of thing, okay? And you can shorten them several ways. I shortened this one two inches, and I thought I had it enough when I measured in under here. Once this machine snout goes under, it should have been fine, but we were in a hurry to leave and I was moving furniture and I didn't realize that from the floor up, this little extrusion from the sidewall, if this machine was set on the deck, it was going to hit the exciter armature. So I had to come up with a fix and the fix was to go get me some two inch square tubing that was wider than the machine, two pieces, one in the front, one in the back. And then I made some clips to hold the machine bolt this to the to the to the frame to the bed and then the machine to the uh, square tubing and it worked out pretty good okay it's a pretty good little fix the other thing i did a little video about was there's a problem in these 200s here's your gas valve from your fuel tank and they tell you no manual is supposed to turn them off every night and the right way would be to uh turn the valve off let the machine run out of fuel sitting there while you're rolling up most people never did that. I never did it. And it's even harder inside of a, a truck like this. You have to pull this cover up and all that. So most of the people didn't. And what will happen, some debris and trash will get in this carburetor. There's a little needle valve in there. It's very common. Or different things can cause it. And you'll have fuel that will be leaking on the ground through the overflow. Or it will leak inside this breather, this air breather, and it will you know, go down into the oil. This breather is not a paper filter. It is oil. It's, you fill this bottom part up with oil. The air intakes over here, and it's forced down on top of the oil. It bounces, kind of like a basketball, and it traps all the dirt. It's very efficient. It's a very good system. Um, so to fix that problem, my mechanic recommended one of these solenoids. Uh, it's like an electrically operated valve. And uh, when you flip the switch on, it comes on, opens the valve, and when you, when you turn your machine switch off, it kills it, and it it's a valve, so I don't have to reach on it here and turn this. Works really good. I would recommend, though, what can go wrong always goes wrong. And you can lose $1,000 one day if you don't have some parts I can drive in town. So get you a piece of hose that's extra long, this size, whatever size you use, so that if it does go out, you can bypass it. And you can go around here to your carburetor, and you're back in the game, and you don't have to lose a bunch of money till you get home on the weekend and uh, get some things fixed up. Also, um, I had Mr. Flynn put on a glass pack. You guys today, um, you're probably not familiar with glass packs on cars, but I came up in the muscle car days and glass packs. It had this uh, nice sound that was throaty, but it wasn't real annoying. It was kind of manly sounding, but it muffled a little bit. So I put a glass pack on here and I really like how it made it sound. Uh, you can tell that it's a 200, but it's not annoying, okay? And uh, in a minute, we'll talk about one more thing. 